Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. And here once again is my garage shop. And in this video, we're going to be updating the casters on the ShopSmith Mark V. And actually more to the point, we're gonna be updating the wheels on the caster assemblies. Now these casters date back, the design of them back to the mid 1950s when the Mark V was introduced. And they're really kind of cool. Uh, they're, there are three positions, the first position being with the machine on the ground. Um, you step on a pedal that raises the machine up about a quarter of an inch. You step on it a second time, it raises it up about a half inch total. Um, that seems to be high enough to get over extension cords and, and mis, uh, misalignment in your concrete floor. Now, now actually extension cords, you're, you're probably gonna have to lift the machine up and, and help it up and over but it can be done. So that's typically where I use them is at that second height. The, uh, the problem with the casters has always been the wheels themselves. They're, they're a hard plastic and that plastic seems to get brittle when you're working in a cold environment. Now, a lot of us are working in our garages, which are typically not, not heated. Um, in my actual shop, not only am I only heating with a wood stove, but the, it's a poured concrete floor that's really, really rough. It's very old and the building used to be a factory. So uh, that creates all kinds of problems. So I've replaced my casters with wheels a couple times. Now, there are three possible solutions, by the way, I work with Germans. <laughs> the first one is I can just put new versions of the original casters on. They're not terribly expensive, uh, but wh why would I set myself up for future uh, repair problems? The second kind of economy upgrade is a set of casters that can be purchased on Amazon. They're very, very reasonable, and they feature um, a, a, a polyurethane tire molded onto that wheel, and that makes them a bit softer and smoother on um, most surfaces. The third upgrade is what Shopsmith is offering. Now, last week, when I had the headstock off this machine, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just get this done. Um, I didn't have the ShopSmith casters on hand, but I did have the economy upgrade from Amazon. So while I had the headstock off of the machine, I went ahead and flipped it over and I replaced the casters with the, uh, the, the economy upgrade. So here's a little bit of that footage. Okay, so now... Uh, even though I have those casters on here and I'm, I'm really pleased with them, um, we're going to go ahead and install this upgrade kit. It took a month to get this. And uh, what's different about these is they're a larger diameter than was originally designed to go onto the caster assembly. So that means for these to work, we have to raise that assembly up on the leg. And so uh, this kit happens to come with a jig to help us drill some new holes in the legs and to reposition this. I think I'm gonna do this without removing the headstock so you can see that process, um, how, how I typically would do this. To loosen the nuts on the old hardware, you're gonna need a very short 7 16 wrench. I don't have a short one, but I do have this stubby adjustable wrench. And with a little bit of fighting, you can get that loose. You'll also notice I had to spin that pedal around a little bit. And here's the problem. Shopsmith, for whatever reason, used square nuts. Uh, let's talk a little bit about these casters. These are uh, pretty, pretty slick. And as I mentioned, they have three different positions. You step on this pedal to bring it to the different heights. So right now the casters are retracted. If I rotate this as if I were stepping on this pedal with my foot to the first position, we got about a quarter inch or so of space bring it to the next position. There we have about half an inch to three quarters of an inch of, of extension. And then step on the pedal one more time and that retracts it, as I mentioned. Now, they, this was designed to fit the tapered leg of the Mark V, which actually gave this a little bit of integrity. But uh, in the 90s, the Shopsmith was introducing a number of standalone tools. We'd already had the power station. There were already some, uh, some stands that you could put your accessories on, but then along came the, um, the router system, which included a pin router, and then they had the, uh, the, the crafter station. And so uh, they had to make some changes to this because first off, this got in the way of the leg. So they ended up moving that a little bit further inboard. 
And um, then because the legs on those things were different, they had to put spacers in between them. And then they found out that, you know what, the legs on the Mark V were giving this some integrity. And because the legs on those stands could flex a little bit, they were having problems when folks were stepping on this, this rotating shaft would pop out of the ends. So they changed them and drilled them out and put a, uh, a, a screw threaded into this part here. So now we're not just relying on the legs to hold these in place. Um, that, uh, that, that screw is there. Now, a screw needs to be able to rotate a little bit. And because of that, you get in situations like this where that screw can begin to back out. So I need to put some Loctite on the threads, drive that in, but not drive it in so tight that it's clamping against that. Um, still, cool, cool piece of engineering. Um, also, around that time, these were shipped over to Taiwan, and uh, that also introduced a few quality issues. One more thing to show you here is as you're stepping on that pedal and rotating these cams through their various adjustments, there is a set screw that is holding that cam onto that rotating shaft, and there is a flat spot that that set screw tightens against. You may occasionally find that it doesn't, uh, doesn't lift properly. It may be because one or the other of those has gotten loose and is no longer in proper alignment. You can put a little bit of lubrication on this, either paste wax or you can use that, uh, that Teflon spray I recommended, but uh, don't put grease on it because that's just gonna attract dust. The premium caster set does come with some full-size templates that can be used for marking the location of the new holes that you're going to have to drill. You can tape this template in place. Uh, there's also a drill jig available that indexes into one of the pre-existing holes. The problem is the pin on that jig didn't fit any of my pre-existing holes. Now, I could have enlarged that hole by running a drill bit into it, but I thought, this is nuts, I should be able to do this. So you'll see what I wound up doing is it does have one hole that's designed to bolt in place through one of the original holes in the legs. And instead of having the pin pass through that other hole, I have the pin pointing away from the hole. And then from the backside, uh, just align that up centered with the hole and clamp it in place. That worked just fine, um, but it does seem like there would have been a little more precision built into this kit. The next thing I did was uh, I added a little dab of oil to the tip of the drill bit, which came with it. It is not a high quality drill bit by any means. And uh, I would have been better off to just start with one of my other drill bits that I already have. Now, what you can't see from this angle is I'm standing on the lip of the table. So here from the other end, you can see I'm holding that down because there's a fair amount of pressure that's required to drill through that leg. Because we're going higher up on this leg where it's actually a little bit tighter, um, you're going to need to bring the caster in and slide it down with that portion right there running inside of the groove on that side as you line up on the other side. And then using the newest hole, there we go, and we're having to force force the legs apart just a little bit to get that to slide in place. Thank goodness we now have hex nuts here and those easily lock in place. And the first leg, uh, the first wheel you can see I'm just pressing in and uh, decided to go ahead and follow all the instructions. <laughs> uh, first thing they tell you to do is maybe pinch that loose ring in tight against the uh, stem and then to apply a little bit of oil. That worked better. By the time I got around to the fourth wheel, I was applying the oil to the mouth of the hole and uh, pressed in quite easily. From here, I'm going to stand it upright, and you'll notice again the headstock is on the machine in this one. So you gently lower it down. This is always easier with two. And then I'm grabbing both ends of the headstock, the quill end and the drive hub end, to lift it into place. Oh, hey now. Okay. 
So just a few more thoughts on the Shopsmith Premium Casters, and then I'll give you my conclusion. Um, one thing I noticed is when I step on the pedal to raise it to the first position, um, I'm not getting all the way off the ground with all four feet, if you will. Um, the instructions address this, and in fact, the kit includes four of these washers that are used as spacers. And they tell you, you need to check it. Now, here's the thing. What you don't wanna do is use these spacers if you don't need them, because when the machine should be sitting down on the ground, it may actually be up on the caster slightly. So you install them, you flip the machine up onto its feet, and you check it. Well, it turns out mine sits on all four feet, and then when I step on the pedal for what should be the very first height, I'm not getting off the ground fully. And so that means I have to use these. So uh, that, that weighs in on my opinion, obviously. So let's just go ahead and get to the conclusion. It moves so smoothly. I mean, it's super, super slick. Um, however, when I roll into my shop, I go over two extension cords. I still had to lift it up and over the extension cords. And if I had had my jointer on the machine, it would have been that much harder to do. So I really didn't gain a whole lot by moving to those three inch casters. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly which way I leaned until I thought, you know, if I were to upgrade all of my Shopsmith machines uh, at my shop, do I really want to spend 65 bucks a machine or do I spend, want to spend closer to 25 bucks per machine? Do I really want to have to flip the machine upside down and then upright and then upside down again, possibly for putting spacers on and then upright? Or do I just want to flip it one time and toss these replacement wheels on? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So for about 25 bucks from Amazon with the Amazon Prime, you can get these two inch polyurethane wheels. Um, they do have ball bearings and they're des designed to support the weight that we have here. And uh, without reservations, I would recommend that. The Shopsmith casters are fine and super smooth. If you have a very uneven floor, in your shop, maybe you would benefit from them. But just understand that you're going to be doing cartwheels with that machine. Uh, it might be a great time to do that when you need to remove the headstock because with the headstock off, that process of turning it over is much, much, much easier. So there you go. Um, highly endorse the uh, economy upgrade. Let me know what you think. I'll be doing a midweek follow-up to this video of what we call stumped Q&A. So uh, I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots in the comment section below, and uh, we'll see you then. Make it a great week.